uh, designs back in the old days. But they got a call uh, exactly 12 hours before the dam failure. The dam, the dam uh, keeper, Tony Harnischfeger, calls and said, I got dirty water issuing forth from the right abutment area. Mow all and drops everything he's doing. He gets his assistant chief engineer uh, in the car with him and his chauffeur. He never learned to drive, and they speed up there right away to see what this dirty water is issuing forth from the uh, right abutment to, to look into it. Here's what their inspection looked like at around noon on June the 12th. That's actually Mulholland and Harvey Van Norman uh, and his chauffeur walking, or Tony Harnischbaker, the chauffeur took the picture, walking the top of the dam. So there's what they had, they had it topped out. It was topped out for exactly six days prior to the failure. And this is what that same view looked like the day after, after the failure. This is the right dike, which is way over there. The dam here is gone. So they looked at it, and what they found was uh, that the water was coming through a contraction joint that there well, was a, a, yeah, it's a contraction joint about an inch wide, and it was in the dike section over here because they had to put contraction joints there and grouted them like they should have for good practice. And that water was coming down here and spilling over this loose dump fill right here for this construction access road. And that's why it was getting muddy right here, where Harnischfeger noticed it right here and right there. And so the water coming through up here was actually clear. So he said, you know, that's not a, a, a big deal. And so there were no lights on the dam of any kind. The powerhouse was 7,400 feet downstream, and it drew its water off the aqueduct, which is up above us, 370 feet above us and behind us where this picture is taken. Um, and so there was, you know, when you look at the, um, the eyewitnesses, and one of the things we learned was real interesting is the dam keeper, his six-year-old son, and his common-law wife, they lived just a quarter mile downstream. So they were the first um, they were the first victims, but the boy's body and Tony Harnesfair's body are never found. But Leona Johnson's partially clothed body is found pinched between some of the blocks right up here near the dam site. So she and Tony probably were up there looking at something around midnight when the dam failed. And because one passerby noted lights in the canyon right below the dam within an hour of the failure. Here's actually looking, that's the dam keeper's house right now, where he lived. There's the dam, he's looking up at it. Yeah, you guys think like me, too. <laughs> that's not where I want to live. I'd like to be right up there with you. Um, anyway, this is the, con the contractor's back trying to see he's just topping off here, getting he's almost done uh, with it when it was under construction. You can see this loose dump uh, side cast fill was real common in those days, and so were vertical cuts made with uh, track-mounted steam shovels. Uh, the tidal wave of destruction that came out of here was, was incredible, and uh, we had lots and lots of pictures, and so I was able to go out to these same sites and take comparative pictures today, and then actually do measurements of how, you know, exactly how high this was and where the water spilled over, and actually then be able to run uh, heck grass and run the